Welcome to Swim Lane Process Mapping, a tool to support partnerships and engagement. We'll spend about 25 minutes together learning about this specific method of process mapping and its benefits. Our objectives in this module will be to consider use of process mapping as a tool to support partnership and engagement, learn what a swim lane process map is and why we should use them, assembling the right team with the right expertise, build and review a swim lane process map together, we are assuming in this module that you've had a chance to review and learn the basics of process mapping presented in the prior module of this course. You'll see a link for the basic 101 level process mapping module on the next slide. In the Quality Improvement Basics 101 process mapping module, we learned some key attributes and features of why process mapping is such a helpful and insightful tool, and it's worth recalling these points as they apply to any type of process mapping. The power of process mapping lies in the visual representation of your daily work. It enables a team to translate their mental model of what they think happens into a group shared model of what actually happens. There are always aha moments of discovery, which happen most often when mapping out your current process and team members realize that what they think happens and what actually happens don't really sync up. And it captures important ways your work is unique and how the work is done. Process mapping helps us understand how people, process, and technology are integrated together. We also benefit greatly when we gather multiple stakeholders to diagram a process map and discover ways to work better together. There are opportunities to correct broken processes or design a best possible new or future state process. These benefits come about when we gather a team that both directly carries out the work and understands the process intimately or are subject matter experts that can help design new processes, whether brand new or a redesign or rework the future state of an existing process. Creating a visual diagram of your process enables your team to ask critical questions about how the process works and through this process make the needed improvements on an existing process or improve the new or future state before implementing and testing it out. Listed here are a number of common issues that your process maps both swim lane and basic process maps can and may reveal. Bottlenecks and sources of delay. What's holding up the process? Rework due to errors. Are there quality issues that result that may be part of the process design? Role ambiguity. Who does what or is responsible for certain steps and tasks? Unnecessary or duplicate steps. Long cycle times. Getting from the start to the finish of the process is longer than expected or needed. Lack of adherence to standards. We want our processes to be consistent and reliable. Lack of information. Are we missing some information needed to complete the process or reduce the cycle times and or avoid delays? And lastly, lack of quality controls. What is a swim lane process map and why should we use them? Like all process maps, a swim lane process map helps us unravel and clearly document the steps involved in a workflow, decisions that need to be made, how the process starts, and when the process ends. Generally, it helps us understand who does what when. In the swim lane diagram example here, we see the process of a typical annual exam at a clinic with the focus of identifying patients for prediabetes screening. The actors or participants are segmented into their own swim lanes, the patient, front desk or reception, medical assistant, and the provider, MD or NP, and the process is drawn out from top to bottom and left to right. The process starts in the upper left with a circle indicating the patient comes into the clinic for the exam. We follow the patient on their journey through the clinic where they interact with each of the roles and see that there are several decisions or questions, diamonds, that need to be answered and direct the patient through a different set of steps depending on the yes-no answers or they may skip a few steps in the process that are not relevant to them based on those answers. Lastly, the process is completed to the bottom right where the circle indicates that the exam or encounter is completed and they leave the clinic. This is an example of a process that is contained within a single organization and the process maps helps us understand which roles, the boxes in the left-hand column, are responsible for particular steps related to the prediabetes screening. Imagine if this process map did not include swim lanes. It would be much more difficult to identify the who of who does what when. In this second swim lane process map example, which we'll create together in just a few minutes, we zoom out a bit and are now using the same set of tools and techniques 
to depict a process that takes place across multiple organizations, a food shelf, a primary care clinic, a housing assistance organization, and a legal services organization. Of course, each organization will have many roles, as we saw in the previous primary care clinic process, but at this level we are concerned about how multiple organizations in a community interact to complete the multi-stakeholder process of screening and referring patients and community members to one another. You'll also note in this example that the process can end in multiple ways, at the primary care clinic or when services have been delivered by the housing and or legal services organizations, as indicated by multiple circles which terminate the process on the right-hand side of the diagram. The processes within each organization are likely to be much more complicated with more steps and decision points than depicted on this map, but the point is to document the process to the level needed by the collaborative team. Each organization could, if desired, map out the individual processes that occur within their own organization, just as we saw in the previous primary care clinic example. The example here may seem complex if you are seeing a swim lane process for the first time, but keep in mind we are limited by the size of your screen. With a large white board or using a wall in a conference room, the swim lanes can be much longer and the number of swim lanes can also be increased to accommodate more process actors. When we build a swim lane process map, we consider all of the factors that we do for a standard or basic process map. We start by thinking about what process we wish to document and need to frame the process or put some boundaries around it. What starts or triggers the process and ultimately when does it stop and what is the output of the process? Simply put, where and how does the process begin and end? These are represented by circles as we saw in the process map on the previous slide. Who are the stakeholders and customers or beneficiaries of the work being accomplished through the process you are mapping out? The stakeholders in a multi-organizational swim lane diagram are represented by each swim lane in the diagram. As you map out the steps and decision points in the swim lane diagram, keep asking who does what when. By repeatedly asking this series of questions, you will advance through the process step by step. Lastly, be sure to think about when the responsibility for the next step is owned by a different organization, which is where you jump from one swim lane to the next, and will have an arrow or connector to indicate that transition across the swim lanes. Assembling the team and appreciating expertise. Before diving into the deep end and commencing your swim lane process mapping, you'll need to confirm that you have the right people at the table. Make sure you have identified who actually does the work or who will do the work within the scope of the boundaries of the process you are defining. If it is within a single organization, think back again to our primary care clinic example. Make sure you have the subject matter experts in the room from the departments or designated roles who will carry out the process. If the process is a multi-organizational one, Make sure each organization who will carry out steps within the process has a representative at the table who can fully represent the work they do, as well as capacities and abilities to implement and carry out the design process. It does indeed take a village of diverse expertise and knowledge to understand and provide insights into the workflow that you will be mapping out and or designing for the first time. When you assemble your team, Remember a few of these dynamics and rules of the road to help your swim lane process mapping session function as best possible. First off, recognize that the work you are taking on involves change of some sort. Whether designing a completely new process or revising or modifying an existing process, you are creating changes within your organization, team, and staff. And we know that change is hard, as we are by nature creatures of habit and routines. Change can be even more difficult depending on the culture that exists in your organization. Some may take easier to it and others may be on the other end of the spectrum and resistant to changing the tried and true path and forging a new or unfamiliar one. Maybe you've heard of the saying, culture eats strategy for lunch. This is also true when considering whether your organization will or will not adapt to the changes you propose for your process. Be sure to clearly state that the team will take our stripes off at the door. In other words, leave your titles and hierarchies outside and create a level playing field where all contributions have equal value and weight, and tone down those that are usual decision makers and the most vocal. Furthermore, try to be as objective as possible in your work and not bring the agendas into the room during the mapping exercise. These are of course ideals, but the point is to elevate voices that typically may not have as much input and tone down those that are usual decision makers and the most vocal. And just like in a brainstorming session, we don't want to quash creative thinking and diverse perspectives. Try to follow the mantra, 
seek first to understand and then to be understood, which helps first to value the contributions of others, especially those that are closest to the actual work that is done. Building a swim lane process map. There are multiple ways to build and document a swim lane process diagram. The best option is to gather in a meeting room with a large, long whiteboard with plenty of working space. The larger the group, the larger the board and size of sticky notes you'll need to ensure everyone can see and read the swim lanes and steps you are documenting. Just like in the basic process maps, write down your steps on a sticky note, but hold back from connecting the steps with lines until you are confident of the order of the steps. You can also use multiple easels and flip charts along with the sticky notes. As these diagrams often get longer or wider than you expect, you may run short of left to right swim lane space on paper flip charts, so you may also consider simply using a large empty wall and masking tape to get your sticky notes to adhere, but probably not a good idea to draw any lines or connectors on your wall. Whichever method you use to physically document the process, once you complete your map with your team, pause, review, and then revise as needed. Sticky notes are designed to be moved, so do move and reorder them, oftentimes just to make space for additional steps your team didn't identify and document on your first pass through. And once you are fully confident, then draw your connector lines in. We'll see this in our example in some upcoming slides. Once you have the diagram completed and lines drawn in, the next best step is to convert this to an electronic diagram so you can share this among your team for further confirmation and revision and also more broadly distribute as needed especially when working with multiple organizations. Microsoft Visio is a typical go-to application to do this, and there are others such as the web-based mural.co application or lucidchart.com. You may be able to do this in some other applications like Microsoft PowerPoint or other graphics applications, but Visio is built to help you to do this just as mural or lucidchart.com are, and even has specific swim lane functionality built into it to make it less tedious. As mentioned, you may wish to try an online app like Mural or Lucidchart. In the world of virtual work and team meetings, you can consider working all electronic and doing a live swim lane diagram. Once again, one of the apps mentioned here may be a good option to accomplish this, but you'll need someone who is very adept at creating these diagrams on the fly while sharing their screen as your team describes the process. Without a skilled person at the helm of one of these electronic mapping apps, the focus shifts away from what the team is trying to accomplish to the mechanics of the person struggling to build the map. The big benefit of starting with an electronic app to diagram your workflow is that you skip the entire physical diagramming process and have the electronic diagram when your meeting is complete. Your circumstances, resources, and available skill sets may dictate which method you choose. Let's start creating a swim lane diagram together, but first, a refresher about the shapes we will be using. A circle or oval represents the start or finish of a process. These beginning and ending points are what frames our process or puts boundaries around it. Most of your mapping will be using squares or rectangles representing the tasks or steps, identifying who does what when. The when, for our purposes, is really the sequencing of the steps. We'll also use the diamond shape to represent a question. Pose these questions in your process so that a simple yes or no will enable branching off into the following steps. If you have some large square rectangular sticky notes, you can use those for steps, rotate them 45 degrees to get a diamond decision shape, and just draw a circle in them to represent the start and the finishing points. To help you understand the step-by-step -step process of creating a swim lane process map, we'll use the cross-sector for organization example shown previously that will follow an individual on their journey to obtain social services as well as healthcare services. The community member, or patient as viewed from the healthcare perspective, starts out by seeking food assistance at a local food shelf. They end their visit to the food shelf by having a conversation with one of the staff there who recognizes their need for some healthcare services and refers them to a local primary care clinic. The clinic has a social determinants of health screening process in place and conducts a screening during the encounter and determines the patient has some unmet housing and legal services needs that would help improve their health and address several concerns. They create a referral for the patient to both of these services. This could happen manually on paper and using the phone, or it could be done using an e-referral automated system to make the referral. The individual that we are following through the process is able to follow up 
and connect with both the housing and legal services community-based organizations. And while their journey certainly continues on after that, for purposes of our example, the process has been completed. As you see on the right side of the slide, we've identified our actors, stakeholders, service organizations. There are many labels we could attach to these organizations, and we'll create a vertical set of boxes listing each of them. This is basically our blank canvas, and we are now ready to start adding the starting point, also known as the process trigger event, and add the subsequent steps and decision points, which will be yes-no questions, and then complete the process. Recall that you can draw the swim lane canvas on a whiteboard, use paper flip charts, or use paper and tape and create it on a wall electronically, or whatever resources work best for you. But make sure that you draw large enough for the entire group to be able to read and follow along. If you are working virtually from a desktop or laptop, you may need to zoom in and out frequently as each of your participants may have different screen sizes, as small as an 11-inch laptop, others with 22, 27-inch, etc. larger monitors. Just be aware of keeping everyone engaged and able to view your progress as you go. Consider asking your virtual participants if they are able to read their screens as you zoom in and out and scroll up and down through the diagram as you build it. The event that starts or triggers the process is the community member arriving at a food shelf to seek assistance. This is documented with a circle and then we add a step where the food shelf conducts a basic screening and identifies that the person they are assisting also has some medical needs which they can make a referral for to a local primary care clinic. You might immediately recognize that we've packed a number of steps into one box at the food shelf. You could likely expand the whole single step in our example into its own process map for the food shelf. You'll need to discuss with your team how much detail is needed. For example, you don't need to map out all the steps at the food shelf, but you may need a bit more detail than just a single step or box. This is why building the flowchart first with sticky notes and not creating connectors is a good approach. You might scrap the single step and rewrite that into two steps, or even three. Keep asking your team how much detail is needed, and if you have enough detail to understand how the process works. The next step for our community member is to visit a primary care clinic and the team documents three steps, left to right, then a decision or question along the way, plus one more step. Among our team members that are helping to describe and define the process, we have a medical assistant from the clinic that helps the team document these steps, and they refer to the individual as a patient. The patient checks in at the front desk, the first box on the left, then is given a social determinants of health screening to identify any social needs, a questionnaire which they fill out, the second box or step in the swim lane diagram, and then proceed to have their medical encounter, and then we need to answer a question to proceed in our mapping work. Did the patient screen positive for social needs? Our assumption for the moment is yes, and we'll later address what happens if the answer is no. The final step at the clinic is where a community health worker then makes a referral to both the housing assistance and legal services organizations with the patient's agreement. As a brief clarification, our example may be a bit different from a process that you are documenting in that the example here may not look the same for every community member. They may start with one of the other organizations, but the idea is that each organization has the ability to screen community members for other needs and make referrals to those organizations. You may be documenting a process that unfolds identically every time and doesn't change much based on the individual and their needs, and you'll find yourself using more squares or rectangle shapes with basic steps. The higher the variability in your process, the more decision diamonds you may need, which adds steps and variation to the process. The patient has now received a few referrals to follow up on at both the housing assistance and legal services organizations. The order that this occurs in is not important for our example, and we'll end up drawing the appropriate connectors for that once we are done. At the housing assistance organization, the community member, no longer a patient, checks in with their front desk staff and then has a conversation with an advisor, followed by services being provided after that conversation. The steps are documented in the three boxes from left to right. The same is true for the interaction with the legal services organization, and we documented those three steps in the same way in their respective swim lane. The final one at the bottom of the process map. There are just a few more steps and also ways of completing this process that we'll look at next. In the housing assistance and legal services swim lanes, we can conclude the process with a circle, and we could choose to put that in either swim lane, but chose, arbitrarily, the legal services lane. 
We have chosen to create just one circle or process termination step rather than one in each of the housing assistance and legal services lanes, and there certainly wouldn't be an issue with doing that, and our connectors will both lead to that circle. We have one more item to resolve in the primary care clinic swim lane, and that is to answer the question, what happens if the patient did not screen positive for social needs and had no reason to connect with the housing assistance or legal services organizations? One of our connectors coming off the diamond question step in the clinic swim lane would state no as a response and lead to the circle at the end showing complete, no further needs. We'll see the connectors in the next slide. One of the other steps in the process that we also need to document is that when our community member receives housing assistance and legal services, they send notification to the clinic in a close the loop fashion to let them know that they've connected with the patient or community member. We'll draw a separate set of connectors from the final boxes in each of those swim lanes to the services delivered box in the primary care clinic swim lane, which then will be connected to the final complete circle at the end of the same swim lane. The team thinks they have documented the process to a sufficient level that they all understand the order of the steps, decisions, how things branch off from those decision diamonds, and also when each of the series of steps reaches a conclusion. None of the connectors have been drawn in, and this is intentional. A good practice is to take a break and then have your team do a final walkthrough of the process and make any final revisions, add a missing step or decision as needed, and then agree that you are ready to tie it all together with the connectors. This method avoids having to erase work if you are using a whiteboard, mark out the lines that would have been drawn in on paper charts, or delete connectors if you are using an app and are screen sharing with your team. The team now draws in the connectors as they discussed and talks through the process a final time to confirm that they've identified who does what and in which sequence. Follow the connectors in our example with the first circle in the food shelf swim lane. When you follow the steps and connectors with arrowheads pointing in the direction of the process flow, you'll see the decision diamond in the middle of the clinic swim lane. If the patient doesn't screen positive for social needs, the answer to that question is no, and we draw a connector to the circle indicating the process has been completed at that point. If the answer is yes, you can see that the clinic then makes the referrals and the connector branches off down to the housing assistance and legal services swim lanes. Those processes could occur in any order, at the end of the steps in each of those lanes, two connectors branch off the final boxes. One leads to the circle indicating complete in the legal services swim lane, and the other leads to the clinic swim lane, where the clinic confirms that the housing and legal services were delivered, and then connects to the complete circle. One of the assumptions we made in this example is that the processes we are documenting flow pretty easily from one organization, one swim lane, to the next. When you are documenting your processes, you may discover that your process has many handoffs or transitions between swim lanes. Once again, having some space to document, using sticky notes and shifting things around during your process mapping exercise on the fly will help you keep organized. While drawing the connectors in last provides flexibility and time savings, if your team feels that the process is getting too complex with too many boxes and they can't follow the flow well, there is no reason you can't add some connectors. You may have some portion of your process confirmed and can draw in the connectors at that time, but may need some confirmation or further team discussion on some particular areas of branching, and that's where you might hold off from drawing in those connectors. The team in our example did a great job, took their time, carefully reviewed their process, drew in all their connectors, and now have a completed swim lane process map. Let's conclude our session with a summary and a few parting thoughts. As you saw in the example, the power of process mapping, whether a swim lane or the standard method, lies in the creation of a visual representation of a process, which your team can discuss and confirm that you are all on one page and have confirmed what you believe to be true about the process, whether documenting an existing process, the current state, or designing a new or future state process. This map can then help you translate what you've designed into the real world, implementing and operationalizing a process. Additionally, the process map can help others to understand the process who might not be part of your mapping team, as well as for training purposes or potentially improving or optimizing your process at some future point in time. As the saying goes, a picture tells a thousand words, and your swim lane process map can help communicate much in a single glance about how the process is designed or currently functions. We'll end here by repeating the key to creating a process map, and that is understanding and communicating visually 
who does what when. Good luck to you and your team as you engage in creating your own swim lane process maps.